good morning. Welcome to uh, Yokohama Christchurch on this, the 22nd Sunday after Pentecost. It's great to have you with us today and very warm welcome if it's your first time. All the material for our service today is on the leaflet, which hopefully you've picked up on the way in. And uh, because of the corona, uh, current, current situation with the corona, we are only singing just one hymn um, at the offertory. So now we stand for the opening of our service, which is on page two. Would you please stand? Come to us, Lord Jesus Christ, as you stood among your disciples in your resurrection body, so be present with us now. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the Gospel today, Bartimaeus, the blind beggar, cries out in faith to Jesus. As we prepare for our liturgy, let us ask for God's mercy for the times we have lacked the faith to cry out to Jesus. Lord Jesus, you open the eyes of the blind. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You free us from the darkness of sin. Christ, have mercy. You help us to walk in the light of goodness. Lord, have mercy. mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We say together, Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, We worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose Son Jesus Christ has taught us that what we do for the least of our brothers and sisters, we do also for him. Give us the will to be the servant of others as he was the servant of all and gave up his life and died for us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We sit for the readings. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, justice is far from us, and righteousness does not reach us. We wait for light, and lo, there is darkness, and for brightness, but we walk in gloom. We grope like the blind along a wall, groping like those who have no eyes. We stumble at noon as in the twilight, among the vigorous as though we were dead. We all growl like bears, like doves we moan mournfully. We wait for justice, but there is none, for salvation, but it is far from us. From our transgressions before you are many and our sins testify against us. Our transgressions indeed are with us and we know our iniquities, transgressing and denying the Lord and turning away from following our God, talking oppression and revolt, conceiving lying words and uttering them from the heart. Justice is turned back and righteousness stands at a distance. For truth stumbles in the public square, and uprightness cannot enter. Truth is lacking, and whoever turns from evil is despoiled. The Lord saw it, and it displeased him that there was no justice. He saw that there was no one, and was appalled that there was no one to intervene. So his own arm brought him victory, and his righteousness upheld him. He put on righteousness like a breastplate and a helmet of salvation on his head. 
He put on garments of vengeance for clothing and wrapped himself in fury as in a mantle. According to their deeds, so will he repay wrath to his adversaries, requital to his enemies. To the coastlands he will render requital. So those in the west shall fear the name of the Lord, and those in the east his glory, for he will come like a pent-up stream that the wind of the Lord drives on. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm this morning is Psalm 126. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, then were we like those who dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us and we are glad indeed. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the watercourses of the Negev, for those who sowed with tears will reap the songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying the seed, will come again with joy, shouldering their sheaves. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Second reading is a reading from the letter to the Hebrews. The former priests were many in number because they were prevented by death from continuing in office. But Jesus holds his priesthood permanently because he continues forever. Consequently, he is able for all time to save those who approach God through him since he always lives and makes intercession for them. For it was fitting that we should have such a high priest, holy, blameless, undefiled, separated from sinners, and exalted above the heavens. Unlike the other high priests, he has no need to offer sacrifices day after day. For his own sins, and then for those of the people, this he did once for all when he offered himself. For the law appoints as high priests those who are subject to weakness, but the word of the oath, which came later than the law, appoints a son who has been made perfect forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus and his disciples came to Jericho. As he was, as he and his disciples and a large crowd were leaving Jericho, Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout out and say, Jesus, son of David, Have mercy on me. Many sternly ordered him to be quiet, but he cried out even more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and said, Call him here. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he is calling you. So throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. Then Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, My teacher, let me see again. Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has made you well. Immediately he regained his sight 
and followed him on the way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I think of all the things that um, Jesus did during his earthly ministry, by far the most popular thing among ordinary people was the gift of healing. People travelled great distances and overcame great hardships just to be near Jesus just to be able to get close enough to touch him or to hear his soothing words. And throughout the centuries, the church has continued to be a place of healing. To this day, thousands of people travel on pilgrimage to holy sites in the hope of healing. Millions of people around the world in every language that is spoken pray for those they love, asking God to heal them. Perhaps you are here today thinking and praying for someone you love who is sick. Perhaps you yourself are in need of Christ's healing touch and come in prayer to ask him for help. And yet, God in Christ Jesus did not come to us, born as one of us, simply to take the place of your doctor. Jesus did not come simply to heal people. Jesus came to make people whole. Jesus came to restore people to the fullness of life. As St. John reminds us in his gospel, Jesus said, I have come in order that you might have life, life in all its fullness. Throughout the Gospels, when we read the many stories of healing, there's always much more to understand than simply making people well. A paralysed man stands and walks. A person stretches out a withered hand to Jesus and sees it become useful again. A girl who is pronounced dead wakes up. And like today, the stories of those who once were blind, but now they see. The connections, I think, between seeing and believing are so strong in the gospel that these miracles work through Jesus almost always seem more about growing in faith than taking off dark glasses. Though Bartimaeus was blind to many things, he clearly saw who Jesus was. The blind man Bartimaeus is an example, I think, of what our faith and trust in Jesus ought to be. He has firm confidence in the person of Jesus and is not put off by the abuse of the crowd who regard him as a a nobody, telling him to, to keep quiet. But shouting and waving his arms in the air, he persists with his plea. Son of David, have mercy on me. This cry of desperation from his heart, made in complete trust, gets the attention of Jesus. And when Jesus, when asked by Jesus what he wants, there's no doubt about his request. Life for him without sight has been one long night full of darkness. And his prayer is, Lord, let me see again. With the helping touch of Jesus, a whole new world opens up and he is ushered into the light of day. And although Bartimaeus may have been a beggar, he is a person of gratitude because on receiving his sight, you'll notice in that last sentence, he immediately follows Jesus on the way. You see, the fact that we have eyes does not mean 
we always see what is most important in life. There's more to sight than merely seeing the light of day. Eyes are of little use if we fail to see the hand of God at work in our lives. At times we all experience such darkness and are really in need of the light of God. In caring for the blind Bartimaeus, Christ is telling us that there is an even worse state of blindness than physical blindness. As the prophet Isaiah reminded us in today's first reading, we grope like the blind along a wall, groping like those who have no eyes. We all suffer from spiritual blindness from time to time. And Jesus is letting us know today that he can cure us and prevent us from groping around in the darkness. And there are so many ways in which we lack spiritual vision. Hatred, pride, prejudice and jealousy. They all can prevent us from seeing goodness in each other. Refusal to pay our debts or to do an honest week's work for the wages we're collecting means we are blinded to a sense of justice never being satisfied with what we have and always wanting more stuff is an indication that we are blinded by greed. Treating people badly and without respect simply because they are different from us is an indication that we're blinded by prejudice. We're all victims of some sort of blindness but to become aware of it And to have the scales removed from our eyes, we must be continually searching and praying for more light. Only prayer and trust in Jesus, who is the light of the world, can dispel such darkness and restore our true spiritual vision. And the closer we are to Jesus, the more light there is in our lives. So the cry of the blind man, Lord, let me see again, is really a prayer that should always be on our lips too. The scriptures today are clear. Our God is in the business of restoration, making people whole. And in a world that continues to be blinded by hatred and prejudice and discrimination, God is calling us today to open our eyes and to let the light of Christ pour in. Jesus is calling us to do for others what he did for Bartimaeus, to be agents of justice and reconciliation in our communities and to try, even in our own small way, to bring the message of Christ's passion to make people whole a reality. Not just for us, but in the lives of others. Let us pray. Healing God, in our blindness and ignorance, you open our eyes and lead us to the truth. In our arrogance and defiance, you still our souls and teach us humility. In our weakness, you protect us and lead us home. And while we deserve only judgment, you offer us grace and the hope of a life renewed. And so, with all our hearts, we thank you and give you praise and glory. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
So let us stand together now to proclaim our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. You'll find it on page 5. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate of the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us bring our prayers to Jesus, who restored the sight of the blind, that with him we may see the needs of our brothers and sisters everywhere. This week, we invite you to please pray for, in the world, for those affected by COVID-19, for the Afghan people, for kidnapped victims in Haiti, for the people of Myanmar. In the Anglican Communion, we pray for the extra-provincial churches in Spain, Portugal, Sri Lanka, Bermuda, and the Falkland Islands. In the Mission to Seafarers, we pray for MTS Vanuatu in Port Vila, in our diocese, we pray for St. Peter's Church in Shizuoka, for partner churches in Europe. For those who are sick or in special need, we continue to pray for Kathy Langley, Janet Brown, Geraldine and Chester Gibson, Stepha and Kurt Koch. And for those who have recently died, including Martin, we pray for the repose of their souls. Now to page six. We pray for all men and women of vision, for all who through their insight have built up your church and your world. We pray for writers, musicians and craftspeople, for church synods and councils, for our bishop and all who minister to us. Lord, Open our eyes, that we behold. We pray for all who are inventors and researchers, all who seek to improve and enhance our world, all planners, builders and makers. Lord, grant to each insight into what effect they are having on the world. Lord, open our eyes. We thank you for all you, through their goodness, have provided for us, all who provided for our schooling and our care. We pray for the health service, for doctors, dentists and nurses. We pray for all our friends and loved ones. Lord, open our eyes. We pray for all who have lost vision, all for whom the future looks bleak, all who have lost their way, all who through lack of insight are in trouble. We pray for all whose sight is impaired and all who are blind. We name in our hearts those we know who are bowed down with sickness or suffering of any kind, that God may lift them up. Lord, open our eyes We give thanks for all whose vision is now lost in clear sight, 
all who behold your glory. We pray for loved ones departed, rest eternal, grant unto them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace. And finally, let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Lord of light, open our eyes to the light of your love so that we may bring to reality the prayers and hopes that you alone see in the depths of our hearts. We ask these prayers in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Amen. We greet one another with a sign of peace. Almighty God and Father, accept these gifts and these our offerings and use them in your saving work. All things come from you, O Lord, and of your own do we give you. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living Word, through whom you have created all things, who were sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh. As your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross, 
He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Granted by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice, made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people, And gather into one in your kingdom, all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of all the saints may praise and glorify you forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Rejoicing in the presence of God here among us, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread. The bread we share is one. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed.
We join now in the prayer after communion on page 11. Let us pray. Faithful God, in this communion, you have increased our faith and hope and love. Lead us in the path of Christ, who is your word of life. God of our pilgrimage, we have found the living water. Refresh and sustain us as we go forth on our journey. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Just want to say a very uh, warm welcome. Uh, do we have some people here for the first time? Dennis, did, did you? Yes, um, first of all, I'd like on behalf of the Lord to welcome everyone here. Everybody is from Nigeria, recently joined the Christmas, so welcome to everybody. And also, it's amazing that I've been away about eight weeks. Thank you very much, Dennis. Thank you. And well, nice to have you back, Dennis. Thank you very much. Yeah, good. So just uh, the notices are on the back. As it says on the front, please take the leaflet home with you because just for the hygiene measures so you can dispose of it wherever you like. Um, but just to draw your attention to one or two things. So next Sunday, uh, it's the end of October actually, but we're anticipating by one day the Festival of All Saints Day. So we'll celebrate All Saints Day next Sunday morning with a service here at 930 there's a new clipboard at the back um, with, uh, it's, it's now, things have now moved from the, the uh, porch to into the back of the church. Sorry, it's a bit confusing, but it's just over on the side by the bookshelf if you're looking for things on the way out. There is a clipboard with uh, a roster for readers taking us through November into early December. So if you'd like to have a look at that, and if you're interested in signing up, you're welcome to do so. And behind the rotor, are individual sheets for each Sunday. So you're welcome to take that with you for the, for the one you've signed up for. And then uh, it gives you an opportunity to have a look before, before the day uh, so you can see what you're reading. So that, that's all on a, on a blue clipboard at the back of church. Also, thank you very much for those who've started bringing in items for the Christmas campaign for the seafarers. As you go through the door, immediately on your left, there's a, a little toy ship, which is actually a money box for taking your money. And then there's a, next to that, there's a box which you can put in items which you may have brought in as, as gifts for the Christmas campaign. And that will carry on. That will stay there now until the beginning of December. Thank you very much to, uh, for the Autoflowers, Flowers, for Jenny and Mark, who are over in, uh, in the States. Uh, they, they went back a little while ago, and, uh, but have been keeping in touch uh, with us um, and have been enjoying watching the video of the service. And they have sponsored the Order Flowers today. And also, thanks very much to everybody else who has sponsored the Order Flowers throughout 2021. Today, today is our last day this year for sponsoring flowers, but we'll be doing it again from the new year. So if you'd like to do, interest in doing that, please speak to Noriko, who's here. Um, there's, uh, you can contact her uh, via the, you can use that. She, there is a, I don't think it's on there today, but there is also the email on the back of the bulletin. You can use that and it will be redirected to her. So if you're interested for next year to sponsor the flowers, Basically, once a month on the fourth Sunday, we are responsible for the flowers at the altar, and on the other Sundays, it's the Japanese congregation. So if you'd like to sponsor those in, in Thanksgiving or memory or, or for anything, really, um, you're very welcome to do so. And thanks very much, Noriko, for all your help with that. Um, I think that's probably all I have. Is, yeah, Dennis. Thank <laughs> you. 
<laughs> thank you. Yeah, forward. it's been. Maybe not yet. No. Could you stand for the blessing, please? The Lord be with you. May the Lord reveal to you the hidden glory of his presence and open your eyes to behold that he is with you forever. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Go forth with Christ. Alleluia.